again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 25th of January, 2019. Just read a rather interesting article. U.S. orders all non-emergency diplomatic staff out of Venezuela, advising visiting Americans to leave. Hmm. U.S. citizens residing or traveling in Venezuela should strongly consider departing, the State Department alert said. You see a video there of uh, the Secretary of State, bloated Mike Pompeo, and you'll see the President of Venezuela in the embedded video. The article is written by Carmen Sesson and Corey Samowski, that's S-I-E-M-A-S-Z-K-O. The U.S. State Department ordered all non-emergency government staff out of Venezuela and advised other Americans in the country to also leave. The State Department security alert comes a day after Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro ordered the U.S. to close its embassy in Caracas and get all of its diplomatic employees out of the country. Maduro gave them 72 hours to leave after President Donald Trump announced Wednesday the U.S. no longer recognizes the Maduro government. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo shot back Wednesday that the U.S. doesn't recognize Maduro as having the legal authority to break diplomatic relations. Hmm. It's really none of the U.S.'s business. The U.S. is keeping its embassy in Venezuela open, according to the State Department announcement. This is a reduction in staff, but not closing of the embassy, the alert says. U.S. citizens traveling or living in a country were also advised to strongly consider departing. In the announcement, it advised Americans in Venezuela to consider leaving while commercial flights are available, adding that those who stay should ensure you have adequate supplies to shelter in place. Prior to the announcement Thursday, a former Kurd diplomat said the Trump administration should remove personnel without delay to reduce risk to Americans stationed there. I totally agree. What we really need to start telling citizens is, this is the time to get out. This is the time to prepare, said Brett Bruin, who served in Venezuela and whose most recent government posting was as director of global engagement during the Obama administration. Bruin recalled that in 2003 the U.S. withdrew most of its staff from the embassy in Liberia when rebels threatened the capital city of Morovia. It is a lot easier to extract two or three people than it is to extract two or three thousand, said Bruin. The U.S. has long been at odds with Maduro and his predecessor, Hugo Chavez, the socialist leader who was elected in 1998, and used revenues from the oil boom to spend heavily on social programs. He died in 2013, just before oil prices dropped sharply and Maduro took over. The simmering conflict erupted into a full-blown crisis on Wednesday when Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guarigo declared himself interim president and the U.S. and several other countries threw their support behind him. It's none of our business. Senator Marco Rubio of Florida said in an interview Thursday with NBC's Andrew Mitchell that the goal is for a special transition of power in Venezuela. Again, it's none of our business. But he said all options are on the table because the United States always retains the option of protecting its national security. Uh, really? What's it got to do with protecting our national security by determining that we don't like the president of Venezuela? Longtime Venezuela leader, a watcher, Brian Florenzo, a professor at Florida International University, and an expert on the country's military said he believes Maduro's order for U.S. personnel to leave was probably a big miscalculation. I don't think he's going to arrest them, take them hostage, march them to the airport, said Florenza. I think they will stop short of any provocation that would justify Rubio asking Trump to send in the Marines. Fonesco said ultimately it will be the Venezuelan military that decide whether Maduro stays or goes. The military holds the key to any transition, he said. 
it is easily the most respected institution in Venezuela. Prior to the State Department announcement Thursday, a prominent Maduro supporter appeared to threaten to cut electricity at the U.S. Embassy. Quote, they say they don't recognize Nicholas, said Diaz Alo Cabello, who heads Venezuelan's constituents assembly. Okay, maybe the electricity will go out in that neighborhood, or the gas won't arrive. If there are no diplomatic relations, no problem. Jeff Ramsey, a Venezuelan expert for the WOLA advocacy organization, said Venezuelan military still has Maduro's back. We have not seen any evidence of any kind of meaningful break in the military or within the Maduro's inner circle, he said. Russia, an ally of Maduro, warned the U.S. on Thursday not to intervene militarily in Venezuela. Fonesco said he doesn't believe Moscow would take action. The Russians talk a lot, but they don't have any skin in the game, Fonesco said. I think the Russians want to keep Venezuela a mess because it keeps U.S. foreign policymakers occupied. U.S. foreign policymakers? Venezuela is not that important to them. This is not Ukraine or Georgia. Well, actually, it probably is important to them because Venezuela is swimming in oil. Asked how the Venezuelan crisis might end, Fonesco said, time is a factor. The longer it goes on, the more the outcome favors Maduro and not the opposition, he said. I think yesterday was an attempt by the U.S. to deliver a first round knockout. Again, it's none of the United States' business. It's the people's business, the people of Venezuela. What do you think it would be like for the American people if Russia said they don't recognize Trump having won? since the majority of Americans, according to the Democrats, voted for Hillary. It's none of our business. The United States is really big on regime change. You know it's probably jumping up and down? Huh? Wow, well, the National Security Advisor. He's probably ecstatic. Why? Because he's a warmonger. Bolton is an absolute warmonger. Again, it's none of our business. That's sort of what I think. But the United States is really big on regime change, aren't they? Thanks for listening. You might want to repost this in all your social media accounts. You might want to send it to like-minded friends and ask them to do the same.